Hello students, good morning. We are meeting after a long time. So uh, from today we are going to start a new unit that is plant physiology. Okay? Already we have completed three units. Yes, sir. so today we are going to start a new unit that is plant physiology. First we will understand what is mean by plant physiology and then we will start the next lesson that is mineral nutrition. Uh, in our introductory class we have learned that there are different branches of biology. So from that one very important branch that is known as plant physiology. We know what is mean by physiology. Physiology. Hmm? Physiology, it is a study of physiology or it is a study of metabolic processes which are occurring in plant. Hmm? So, plant physiology, it is a branch of botany which deals with different types of metabolic processes, different types of metabolic reactions which occur in plant. Hmm? Now, we know what is meant by metabolism. Yes, so overall reactions, different processes which occur in plant that is known as metabolism. So, it includes use number of processes like there is a photosynthesis, there is a respiration, there is a transportation of food and water, there is a mineral nutrition the way in which plant absorb different types of minerals. Huh? So in this particular unit we are going to study different types of physiological processes occurring in plants. Yes, this unit is very important number of questions can be asked from this unit. So I just want you to everyone must pay attention on these lessons yes sir so today we are going to start one lesson from plant physiology unit that is mineral nutrition okay mm -hmm. so let's start the new lesson that is mineral nutrition very simple lesson very small topic for exam point of view also two to three questions can be asked from this lesson and uh, around 80 to 90 percent we are going to go through NCRT because if from NCRT straightforward questions can be asked from this lesson hmm? and the some additional part that we are going to discuss that also we will study in detail. Hmm? So first we will try to understand what is mean by mineral nutrition. Hmm? We know that plant perform photosynthesis. See? Why they perform the photosynthesis? They perform photosynthesis to prepare the food material. After this lesson or in upcoming classes, we are going to study the detailed process of photosynthesis. How plant prepares the food material. We have learned that plants are autotrophic. Fine, they can prepare their own food material. Okay, with the help of what? With the help of light energy. Okay. Then what is required? They require carbon dioxide and water. Fine. And the one important pigment that is chlorophyll. Yes. Sir. So plants are autotrophic. They can convert yes, light energy into the chemical energy in the form of or uh, and or with the help of chlorophyll pigment, CO2 and water. Yes, along with these different types of minerals are also involved in that. Yes, sir. so these minerals, they are absorbed either from air, from water or from the soil. Yes, sir. so these minerals, they are very essential for number of metabolic processes, number of metabolic reactions which are occurring in plants. Fine. Hmm? Now, what are these minerals? Yes, these minerals are naturally occurring in organic salts, in organic solid substances, hmm? which have definite chemical composition. Yes, and they have ordered atomic arrangement. So, such inorganic salts or solids are called as minerals. Yes, sir. These minerals are very essential for normal physiology of plant. They are involved in number of processes. They are activators of enzyme. All the details related to this we are going to study. So, these are called as minerals. Now, some minerals are there which are present in plant. Some uh, these plants are going to absorb. Yes, sir. so plant absorb this mineral mostly from soil. There are very few minerals which can be absorbed from air or from water. Hmm? But there is a large group of minerals which are absorbed from the soil solution. Yes, sir. so soil it is a big reservoir from number of minerals that plant require Okay, huh? for their normal physiology. Hmm? Now let's try to understand what is meant by mineral nutrition. Yes, sir. 
न्यूट्रिशन इट इज अ वेरी कॉमन वर्ड दैट रेग्युलरली वी यूज दैट वी मस्ट हैव द एनरिस्ड न्यूट्रिशन टू हैव अ गुड हेल्थ सो इन द सेम वे to maintain the good health of plant plants also require this mineral in definite quantities yes sir so how can we define the mineral nutrition hmm? now the study of acquisition of mineral nutrients by plants yes means what what they do firstly they absorb this mineral yes sir in the first case acquisition means what hmm? in the first case plant absorb this mineral hmm? these minerals are distributed throughout the plant and then these minerals are used in number of processes hmm? so this is known as mineral nutrition so absorption of nutrients yes then distribution of nutrients and its use or metabolism in plants that in common it is called as mineral nutrition fine hmm? now depending upon the use depending upon the amount yes and and from where we get it there are number of nutrients okay we will try to define the essential ability also ha huh? but before this we have to mention some points so we will mention those points and then we will move toward some experiments which are performed to know hmm? what is the role of every uh is a or the what is the role of these mineral nutrients in the growth of plant okay so just note down some points hmm? so as we discussed green plants green plants are photosynthetic green plants are photosynthetic or we can say autotrophic synthesize food they synthesize food through photosynthesis synthesize food through photosynthesis by taking by taking co2 from atmosphere we know that co2 it is taken from atmosphere and water and minerals water and minerals from soil water and minerals from soil as we discuss for photosynthesis what is required plants require water and mineral so water and minerals are absorbed by root from soil fine right? whereas co2 it is taken from the atmosphere and with the help of chlorophyll pigment this co2 it is reduced to the sugar fine right? then now these minerals are minerals are naturally occurring minerals are naturally occurring in organic salts naturally occurring in organic salts or solids with a definite chemical composition with a definite chemical composition and ordered atomic arrangement and ordered okay hmm. now let's see the third important point related to this that in which form or from where plants absorb this hmm. as i uh, told you soil it is a important reservoir for all these minerals hmm. so mainly these minerals they are absorbed by plant roots okay so absorbed by plant roots okay now the process or the mechanism of absorption that we uh, that uh, you will learn in the next lesson so for that first you have to understand the mechanism of transportation of this mineral water and food hmm? so this part or the way in which they are absorbed that we will learn in the next lesson hmm? by plant roots from soil from soil in the form of 
in the form of inorganic ions. They are absorbed in the form of inorganic ions. Okay. When we will study all these minerals, at that time we will discuss which is the absorbable form of this uh, specific mineral and in which form they are used by plant. Hmm? Now let's try to define what is mean by mineral nutrition. Hmm? So mineral nutrition it is a study of acquisition, study of acquisition of mineral nutrient acquisition of mineral nutrient by plant and their role in metabolic processes and their roles in plant metabolism their role in plant metabolism is called mineral nutrition is called mineral nutrition. Hmm? As I told you, instead of this, in simple way, we can also say that plants are absorbing this nutrient, they are distributing and they are used in the metabolic processes. Hmm? So, we can also define as it is absorption, distribution, absorption, distribution and metabolism of nutrients in plants. Okay. So, in simple way we can define, okay, in simple way we can define mineral nutrition like it is absorption, distribution, metabolism of nutrients. So, we will try to understand meaning of all these terms. So, we know that what is mean by absorption. Yes, sir. absorption means what? Hmm? Absorption means plant absorb different types of nutrients hmm, from soil. Hmm? There are different mechanisms that you will be discussing in the next lesson because for that, first of all, you have to understand what is the general mechanism of absorption of nutrients, water, food. Hmm? So, although this part is from this lesson, but this part we will study in the next lesson. Hmm? So, absorption, the first process, first, first part in which plant absorb different nutrients or the different minerals from soil. Hmm? Once they absorb, they are distributed throughout the plant. We know that leaf, it is a part where photosynthesis takes place. Whereas there are different types of or there are so many places where it is stored. Hmm? So for that each and every part of plant must receive these minerals because these minerals they are constituents of number of metabolic processes and each and every cell of plant requires these minerals. Fine. Hmm? So as soon as they are absorbed they are distributed hmm? so there is a distribution system in plant uh, in case of the plant anatomy you have studied xylem phloem internal structure of xylem phloem hmm? in what way food and mineral transported uh, then uh, through which food it is transported through which water is transported hmm? so there is a pipeline system throughout the plant which supplies this, these minerals to each and every part of a plant hmm? now as soon as every cell receives these nutrients these minerals are used in different metabolic processes huh? so the third part where they are used okay that is the metabolism huh? so in mineral nutrition we will study all these parts how they are absorbed in what form they are absorbed how they are distributed and then what are the different types of reactions different types of metabolic processes where we use them huh? this is known as mineral nutrition Yes, sir. Now, what we do? Yes, sir. To analyze different minerals in plant. Hmm? So there is a technique which is known as ash analysis. Hmm? Uh, 
we know that plants majority of weight of plant or the bulk of plant it is moisture yes sir bulk of plant or the fresh weight we call it as a fresh weight if we take the fresh weight of a plant majority of it it is made up of water so to know what is the actual mineral contained in plant we have to dry that plant that is known as ash analysis so in ash analysis what we do in this technique uh, we dry the plant material at 100 degrees centigrade for about uh, means uh, for 100 degrees centigrade in an oval and after that we keep that material in the muffle furnace at 600 to 700 degrees centigrade hmm? now it is burn the plant and whatever left behind that is known as ash hmm? now when scientists performed analysis of that ash they found that plant contained different or uh, 16 different types of minerals yes sir for or when they studied the ash analysis of plant they found that plant consists of 60 different types of minerals hmm? but not all these minerals they are strictly required or they are not compulsory for the normal growth and development from those 60 there are some nutrients some minerals which are essential means they are compulsory if any one of that it is absent it may result into difficulty in the normal plant growth okay so such nutrients are called as essential nutrients just try to understand this although plant consists of 60 different types of nutrients or minerals these minerals means all these minerals they are not called as essential minerals hmm? from that there are some minerals which are strictly required okay plant require them because they are part of the normal processes normal metabolic reactions which are occurring in a cell so for that sake some minerals are strictly required such minerals are called as essential minerals hmm? whereas remaining which are not required compulsory if they are present fine if they are not present okay means it will not cause any harm to the normal growth of plant such minerals are known as non-essential minerals fine hmm? so essential mineral they are compulsory for the normal growth and functioning of plant Okay. non-essential mineral fine if they are not present in the plant hmm, or uh, it means actually they are normally present in the plant there is no need to supply them externally but essential minerals are not formed in plant okay plants are going to absorb them externally because they are essential yes sir so such plants or such minerals are called as essential minerals sir so these plant minerals are classified as essential uh, elements or essential minerals non essential elements or non essential minerals hmm? so first we will mention this but before that we will mention about ash analysis because ash analysis gave us the idea that how many minerals are present in plant hmm? now there are some techniques like hydroponics with the help of that we will understand or we can study each and every element we can study a single element also hmm? what will happen or what is the effect of a single element on the growth of plant what will happen if this element it is absent what will happen if we supply it in excess amount hmm? or in what way that excess amount will affect the normal growth okay will it be uh, useful for the plant to increase the growth or to enhance the growth or will it be uh, means uh, doubtful or the problematic for the plants yes or will it be harmful for the plant hmm? so what will happen if these minerals are applied in excess quantity or in the less quantity so for that we use a technique that is known as hydroponics right this technique also we are going to study in what way we will determine the essentiality of a mineral yes sir but before that we will mention about ash analysis we will try to understand what is meant by ash analysis because ash analysis gives us the idea that plant consists of number of minerals from those minerals some minerals they are essential some minerals are required compulsory for the normal growth and development of plant where others are present in plant in small quantities so there is no requirement to supply them externally fine such elements are called as non essential element so first we will mention ash analysis ash analysis 
Now here what we do? Plant sample. Plant sample is dried at. Plant sample is dried at 100 degrees centigrade in an oven. And then put in. Then put in muffle furnace. Then put in muffle furnace between 600 degree centigrade to 700 degree centigrade. Okay. Hmm. Now, when analysis of ashes done, it has shown that plant consists of more than 60 different mineral. Okay. Hmm. Shown that, shown that plant contains, plant contains 60 different minerals or elephant. Hmm. Now from that, some are necessary for the normal growth and development. They are called as essential elements or essential nutrients. Hmm. Some are necessary for, some are necessary for normal growth and development. Normal growth and development, okay, they are called as essential elements or essential nutrients. Yes, sir. so those are required by plant hmm, or which are necessary for the normal growth and development. They are called as essential, whereas other are called as non-essential, whereas Others are called as non-essential. Okay, so essential nutrients, hmm? they are compulsory, they are essential for the normal growth and means for the normal growth and development, whereas others are called as non-essential elements. Fine. Hmm? Now, based on this, we can classify these nutrients as essential and non-essential nutrients. These essential nutrients based on the amount, in which amount, whether in large quantities, whether in small quantities, so they could be classified as macronutrients or macro element, micronutrients or micro elements. Fine. Hmm? So, these essential elements required by plants elements or which are also called as nutrients hmm? elements required by plants okay they could be classified as essential and non-essential essential and non-essential as we discussed before essential elements or essential nutrients they are most for the normal growth and development okay these elements required by plant from the external means means plants are not able to synthesize them they are not present in plant plants are going to absorb them from the external sources so such elements are called as essential elements yes sir. required by plant Plants required by plants from external sources, okay, or from external means. Okay. Whereas non-essential elements, they are naturally present in plant. So, they are not required to be absorbed from external means. Huh? So, present in plants, present in plants, not required, 
present in plants not required to be absorbed from not required to be absorbed from external means absorbed from external means yes sir so those which are not available in plant those plants want to absorb from externally they are called as essential so their need it is for hmm? so such nutrients such elements are called as essential elements now depending upon the amount okay whether they are required in large quantities or whether they are required in small quantities these essential elements could be classified as macro elements and micro elements also called as macronutrients or micronutrients okay so macronutrients macro nutrients or macro elements same hmm? macronutrients or macro elements and second one is micronutrients micro nutrients or micro elements so if you see the name you can also say macro meaning larger so those elements which are required in larger quantities okay they are known as macro elements those which are required in smaller quantities they are known as micro element okay so macro nutrients required in required in large quantities required in large quantities whereas micronutrients required in small quantities we are going to study in detail which are macro element which are micro element hmm? what are their different role how much quantity it is required hmm? so this is very basic hmm? so based on sensibility hmm? we have seen that with the help of ash analysis we came to know that uh, 60 different types of minerals are present in plant so these minerals would be classified as essential or non-essential essential elements are necessary for the normal growth and development okay uh, they are naturally absent in plants so plants have to absorb then externally hmm? whereas non-essential they are present in plant yes sir so there is no there is no need to absorb from the external means fine hmm? Chalo. these some basic points we learn now next we will move toward one experiment that is known as hydroponics hmm? very interesting hmm? as i told you how we will come to know why this mineral is essential for the plant growth we are seeing that these essential elements they are most for the plant growth so how scientists came to know that out of the 60 minerals this particular mineral is essential for this this type of metabolic reaction because of absence of this particular element plant growth it is affected so for that we need some proof for that we need some experiment so the experiment which was conducted yes sir, the experiment which was conducted to know what is the essentiality of mineral in what way these minerals affect the normal growth and development it is known as hydroponics it is also known as soilless culture hmm? because we are not growing plants in soil we are growing them in a solution yes sir in a nutrient solution so that technique it is known as hydroponics fine huh? i hope you have heard about this hydroponic Hmm? now hydroponics it is also known as soil less culture yes sir. so cultivation of plants in the balanced nutrient solution we know that usually plants grow in the soil because the root system require a support hmm? so soil provide the medium so that root can anchor and they can support the whole plant but in case of hydroponic as we have as we know that these plants they absorb uh, the these minerals from soil okay mainly from soil so instead of soil if we use a particular solution containing one to few minerals in that from that we will come to know yes sir. from that we will come to know what is the significance of this yes sir. 
So for that the experiment which we said that is known as hydroponics okay we will try to understand what is mean by hydroponics and what is required over there hmm? just a minute. Okay, so let's try to understand what is meant by hydroponics or what is meant by soil lace culture. Okay, uh, so and uh, one more thing or with the help of this soil lace culture, we will understand so many things. So first we will try to understand what is meant by hydroponics, what is meant by soil lace culture and then we will see uh, in what way we can use this one. So let's see what is meant by soil lace culture. So hydroponics, it is a cultivation of plants in a balanced nutrient solution. As I told you, plants absorb these nutrients from the soil. So instead of soil, we are going to use a solution which consists of a specific mineral nutrition, uh, a specific mineral which we want to study. So that is known as hydroponics. It is also called as soil lace culture. Okay, it is also called as soil lace culture, water or the solution culture. Fine, so that is known as hydroponics. Yes, so write down next point, hydroponics. After this, we will do NCRT reading also because as I told you, questions come from NCRT from this lesson. So hydroponics, it is a cultivation of plant. Cultivation of plants in a balanced nutrient solution, in a balanced nutrient solution without soil means we are not going to use soil in this we know that soil it is why it is important for plant because plant absorb water mineral from soil but instead of that we are keeping this plant in a water containing specific mineral nutrition so it is also known as soil lace culture solution culture or water culture yes sir so also called as so called as hydroponics hydroponics or soil lace culture hydroponics or soil lace or water or solution culture water or solution culture hmm? this experiment was first conducted by satches Okay, huh? experiment was first conducted by such experiment was first conducted experiment was first conducted by such whereas the hydroponics culture solution Okay, the nutrient solution was prepared by knots. Yes, sir. So, culture solution, culture solution was prepared by, was prepared by knots. Hmm? These two names you have to remember. The experiment was first time performed. Now, this experiment we are commonly using to raise number of vegetables number of fruits huh? when you will understand the significance of this hmm? this technique is now so commonly used in agriculture hmm? so this experiment was first conducted by scientists and a specific nutrient solution hmm? that was prepared by knobs fine hmm? Chalo. now let's try to understand what is this experiment yes sir or what is done in this experiment okay hmm? Let's see what is hydroponic or the experimental setup of hydroponics. First try to understand in this we are not going to use soil to plant 
but instead of that we are going to use a solution which consists of a definite concentration of the nutrient media hmm? so let's see what we do in this hmm? we take a pot okay hmm? so for this we need a pot yes the, the no, normal pot which we use hmm? now this pot it is sealed one yes sir so this pot it is sealed okay hmm? now at certain places hmm, we make hole or we insert a plant now here now we need a plant for this okay hmm? now we place a plant suppose this is a plant having well developed root and shoot system fine huh? this is the plant having branches huh? leaves okay huh? so now this plant we have kept over here hmm? so one plant we have placed here huh? so this is the pot huh? now in this pot we have taken the nutrient solution yes huh? so in this pot there is a nutrient solution there is no soil hmm? so here to support this plant we have to put a plug so that this plant will not move for, from its position as there is no soil there is no support for the root huh? so the point from where we insert or we place the plant okay so we need to put one support so that that plant could stand properly huh? now this pot it is filled with the nutrient medium okay this nutrient medium it is added or the solution it is added with the help of one bottle or with the help of one tube yes sir so that tube we have inserted from one side yes sir as i told you this pot it is completely closed hmm? so we need to add the nutrient solution because if we are go going to grow this plant in the nutrient solution uh, after a few days this plant will absorb all the nutrients so we have to add the fresh nutrient medium also Hmm? so for that what we do we put one funnel over here okay so or one small bottle who has a pointed end like this which can insert inside like this yes sir so one funnel we use now this funnel is inserted through one opening here also we have to put some plug to support this funnel okay and it should be completely airtight okay now this funnel it is filled with the nutrient solution which we want to add or which we want to supply okay so this is funnel containing funnel containing nutrient solution funnel containing nutrient solution now besides this what is required by plant that is oxygen air root requires the air so for that as the opening or the pot it is completely closed okay so we have to insert one aeration tube that can supply the fresh air to the root okay so one aeration tube it is also inserted from one end okay which can supply fresh air okay so definite amount of air Okay, could go inside fine hmm? so such aeration tube it is placed hmm? now this tube can pump or can release the specific amount yes sir it can release the specific amount of air hmm? because at other places the 
spot it is completely closed yes we are not having anything to enter so here also we need the air tight plug so that the air or the fresh air will go inside the nutrient solution so this is aeration tube this is aeration tube okay uh, this one is plant fine hmm? so this is known as hydroponics huh? now see what is the significance of this why we do this huh? just try to understand hmm? we know that there are number of nutrients number of minerals which are essential for the plant growth what is the proof for that okay i am telling you so you have to believe no there must be a evidence there must be a proof that can prove that no these essential or these elements these nutrients are really essential for the plant growth hmm? so what can we do when we will come to know that particular element it is essential when plants will show us some deficiency symptoms huh? now deficiency symptom means what hmm? whenever particular element it is absent Hmm? See, just try to understand. These points are very important. Huh? Whenever particular element it is absent, hmm? uh, the metabolic process or the reaction hmm, in which that mineral or element was involved will be affected. Yes, ekada huh? mineral elements are absent a cell. Third, the mineral element ja metabolic reaction madhe involved ahe. The metabolic reaction ahe the disturb hona re. Hmm? And because of this, plant will show some symptoms. Now these symptoms are morphological symptoms. Okay, externally apke lete ya plant cha growth madhe kahi abnormalities this saath okay. So these are known as deficiency symptom. Means what? If a particular element it is absent, okay. If the particular element is absent. Plant will show deficiency symptoms. Plant will show some abnormal feature. Hmm? From that, we will come to know. No, this abnormality it is because of absence of a particular element. Hmm? Obvious, ah, hai. Ekha da goshti sa importance apne la kadhi laksha the to jivhati goshta tithe naiye. Ani tya goshti moye kahi tari unusual things hota hai. Kiva tya goshti cha absence moye kahi tari unusual things hota hai, which we can mark. Hmm? So from that we will come to know what is the essentiality or what is the necessity of that particular thing. In the same way, hmm, with the help of hydroponics, what can be done? See, what we are do, do, means what we are using here. We are using a solution. Hmm? Soil it is reservoir of number of minerals. Hmm? We can't say that plant absorbing only single type of nutrient from plant. Soil madhe veg vegre minerals are hit. Plants at a time acres mineral absorb karu shakar na hai. At a time so many minerals can be absorbed. Hmm? Then how we will come to know what is the role of these essential elements or what is the role of a single nutrient. But here when we are doing the hydroponics we can prepare a nutrient solution. Okay. By adding one or few or many nutrients, hmm? uh, we know that carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, these are also mineral. The plant body it is mainly composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So these are essential. Without that, plant body also, plant cellular structure, plant metabolic reactions are not possible. Hmm? After that, the important mineral that is nitrogen. Hmm? We know that nitrogen it is a component of protein, amino acids, okay, huh? ATP, yes, huh? enzyme. So nitrogen, if it is absent, it will affect the growth of plant. Now, if we want to study what is the effect of nitrogen? Hmm? Means what happens when we apply it, or what, uh, or what happens when we apply it in a normal concentration? What happens if we give it in a high concentration as well as in low doses? Huh? So for that what can we do? We can add a particular mineral and we can study the effect. We can study the deficiency symptoms also. Yes sir. So for that saying hydroponics it is a very important technique. Hmm?
Now here what happened? Here soil it is not required. Yes sir. So either we can grow this plant singly or we can put a series of plants and then we can keep this nutrient solution circulating. So in agriculture number of plants like tomatoes, cucumber, lettuce, number of plants we are growing with the help of hydroponics techniques. Whichever nutrients are essential that nutrient medium we supply we just keep it in a flowing hmm? we just take one pipe hmm? in that pipe we place the plants hmm? and we keep the nutrient solution flowing hmm? so in this case roots are continuously bathed in uh, the flowing nutrient solution wherever plant requires these nutrients they absorb from the uh, flowing nutrient solution hmm? so with the help of this technique we will come to know that plants can be grown without soil soil it is required for what soil it is required for the support as well as to absorb the nutrients soil it is a major reservoir of different nutrients but instead of soil if we are giving the nutrient solution which consists of already uh, added nutrients in that then plants can be grown without soil also hmm? so it shows that fine soil it is a supporting medium okay huh? but plants can be grown without soil also if we add specific nutrients plants can be grown anywhere or they can be grown in the liquid also hmm? this is known as hydroponics yes huh? now why we do hydroponics as i explained now hmm, uh, with this we will come to know what is the role of particular mineral in the normal physiology of plant what happens if uh, it is present in excess amount what happens if it is present in less amount we can study the deficiency symptoms also hmm? so for that sake hydroponics we are using normally fine hmm? so this technique it is known as hydroponics yes sir besides hydroponics there are two more techniques one that is known as sand culture hmm? so as we know that in sand also sand it is dry sand is not able to absorb water as much the soil can absorb so in the sand culture also plants can be grown in sand also but we have to spray a nutrient solution on that then plants can grow on sand also fine hmm? so this is known as hydroponics fine hmm? so question can be asked on this so we will mention some points related to this what is hydroponics and how we do this hmm? so in this setup plants are grown in in this setup in this setup plants are grown in plants are grown in a defined nutrient medium plants are grown in defined nutrient solution or medium this is prepared by mixing this nutrient solution is prepared this is prepared by mixing this is prepared by mixing chemically pure mineral nutrient chemically pure mineral nutrient in pure water nutrient salt in pure water the solution is taken in a sterilized glass okay the pot which we are going to use it uh, it would be better if it is a glass container hmm? so the solution is taken solution is taken in sterilized glass what is mean by sterilization we have used this term sterilized glass hmm? sterilization means huh? 
uh, removal of microorganisms we know that if the pot has microorganisms it can contaminate it can affect the plant hmm, and it can cause disease to the plant fine hmm. so the pot or the glass container which we are going to use that must be free of microorganisms so that process it is known as sterilization for that we can use certain chemicals or we can apply the high temperature hmm. so solution is taken in the sterilized glass jar glass jar or polythene bottles or polythene bottles covered with black papers covered with black paper hmm? as i told you the, this pot we are not going to keep open hmm? so that pot has to be covered okay we can use black film or the black paper or anything for that with black paper now what it is huh? if it is covered with the black paper then light will not penetrate and then it will check the growth of algae growth of fungus that could prevent the contamination hmm? and the plant can be kept free from different types of infections or diseases okay so it minimizes the risk of algal contamination it minimizes risk of it minimizes risk of algal contamination risk of algal contamination and reactions of roots reactions of roots to the sunlight reactions of root to the sunlight now besides this this jar has some openings or slit uh, to add the nutrient solution as well as to provide the sterile air okay so this point also we will mention and then we will see what is the significance of hydroponics fine <sighs> the jar contains slit covers jar contains slit covers or cork sorry split covers split covers or cork with hole or cork with holes for suspending for suspending plantlet or seedling suspending plantlet funnel funnel for adding a nutrient solution funnel for adding a funnel hmm, through which we add the nutrient solution funnel for adding nutrient solution okay and a bent tube for aeration hmm? and a bent tube for aeration hmm? now as i told you regular supply of air it is essential for the proper growth of fruit fine hmm? so regular aeration regular aeration of culture solution regular aeration of culture solution is necessary is necessary for proper growth for proper growth of roots fine it is necessary for the proper growth of roots yes sir now let's discuss the point what can be studied with the help of this hydroponics yes sir or uh, what 
or it helps in knowing what hmm? as we discussed uh, it helps in knowing what is the essentiality of nutrient what are the deficiency symptoms if particular nutrient it is absent hmm? so let's see hydroponics helps in knowing what hmm? so hydroponics hydroponics helps in knowing first okay essentiality of mineral essentiality of minerals okay hmm? after this we will see what are the criteria for essentiality here yeah? uh, in what case we will say a particular element is called as essential after this point we will discuss that point hmm? so with the help of hydroponic we will come to know what is the essentiality of mineral okay we can study deficiency symptoms develop deficiency deficiency symptoms developed due to non availability due to non availability of particular element particular element hmm? as we discuss what will happen if a particular element it is absent hmm? so in that case what can be done we can prepare a sol solution by, uh, by avoiding a particular nutrient hmm? we will keep two pots over there in one pot we can put uh, all the nutrients in that and in the second pot we can uh, means accept one nutrient then we can compare the growth pattern of both the plant and from that we will come to know what are the changes we are observing when a particular nutrient it is absent hmm? so these are known as deficiency symptom hmm? third what we will come to know we can study the toxicity to plant when it is present in excess amount hmm? can be study toxicity when present in excess as i told you these nutrients are required in specific amount if they are supplied in more amount they can cause the toxic effect if they are supplied in less amount they show the deficiency symptoms so, so proper concentration optimum concentration of these nutrients it is required so if they are present in excess amount then it leads to the toxicity so with the help of hydroponics we can study the toxicity also we can also study what are the possible interactions among the different nutrients yes eh? so possible interactions among possible interactions among different elements among different elements present in plants elements present in plants okay and the very important part with the help of hydroponics we will come to know what is the role of these nutrients in the normal metabolism of plant that only we were discussing that these nutrients are involved in the number of metabolic reactions huh? so if a particular element is absent hmm, or if it is present in excess amount we can study in which these nutrients are used in the different metabolic reactions fine hmm? so role of essential element role of essential element in normal metabolism in normal metabolism of plant yes so these things can be studied from hydroponics yes
Now, besides this, there are large number of application of significance of this. As I told you, this technique it is commonly used in agriculture to grow number of plant like tomatoes, lettuce, cucumber. Yes, so such plants can be grown without soil. Here roots are bath in the solution or the nutrient solution. So now let's discuss what is the significance of this hydroponics. So significance. First one. Okay. It can or this technique can be used for the commercial production of vegetables like tomato, lettuce, cucumber, as I told you, hmm? can be employed, hydroponics can be employed for commercial, for commercial production of vegetables, commercial production of vegetables like Tomatoes, seedless cucumber, seedless cucumber, lettuce, etc. Okay, so this technique is regularly used in agriculture hmm, to raise number of vegetables. Hmm. The second significance is hmm, it is useful in the having areas where the soil it is dry, it is infertile, it is uh, devoid of nutrients. So, so in such areas, this technique it is so useful. Hmm. So as I told you, mostly in the dry areas, desert areas where soil it is infertile. So in such areas, this technique it is highly used to grow number of vegetables and fruits yes sir so useful in areas useful in areas having thin infertile thin infertile and dry soils Then it can regulate the pH at optimum for a particular plant. See, we know that soil pH, it can be changed. Yes, sir. Uh, plant growth, it is markedly affected by the pH of soil. We know that slightly acidic pH, it is good for the plant growth. But if it is too acidic or if it is too alkaline, then it retards the plant growth. So if we are using the hydroponics and soil pH, it can be maintained. Okay. And then plant can resume the normal growth. Fine. Hmm? So it can regulate the pH. It can regulate pH at optimum. pH at optimum for its proper growth. For its proper growth sorry for a particular crop for a particular crop okay it also controls the soil borne pathogen also controls soil Born pathogen. We know that number of bacteria hmm, are present in soil. They can infect the plant. But as it is a soil-less culture, it prevents the chances of contamination or the chances of infections which are caused by different pathogens. Huh? So these are the different significances and uh, applications of this hydroponics. Huh? On hydroponic question can be asked. Hmm? Now, as I told you, along with hydroponic, there is a sand culture also. Hmm? So, in case of sand culture, what is done? The plant it is placed in the sterilized sand. Okay, huh? sand also we have to uh, make it sterilized, free of microorganism. After that, we have to place the plant in this. Huh? Now, this sand has to be supplied with the nutrients. Yes. Huh? Now, sand culture has few more advantages over hydro. 
hydroponics uh, sand culture provide the natural support to the root system as we discussed in case of hydroponic there is no natural support to the plant yes sir but if we are using the sand plants will get the natural support plus we are adding the nutrient solution or the sand it is supplied with the nutrient solution so sand culture it is regularly used in the dry areas where also soil it is infertile it is dry it is uh, or it contains very less minerals in that hmm? so there also this technique it is commonly used fine hmm? so this is known as hydroponics or the soil less culture hmm? Chale, now let's discuss the next point that is the essentiality of minerals as i told you how we will come to know that particular element is essential or not okay hmm? so there are some criteria Okay. if the particular element if it follows or if all these criteria are app applicable for the nutrient that nutrient is said to be essential nutrient hmm? so this is known as essentiality of mineral nutrients yes? how to determine the essentiality hmm? so according to arnon and stout Okay, huh? they performed the experiment and they stated some features. Huh? Means they studied the role of individual nutrient on the growth of plant. They studied the deficiency symptom. They studied the toxicity pattern. Huh? Means they studied what happens if we apply the nutrient in excess amount. What happens if we apply in less amount. So they studied the entire mineral nutrition and they stated some things hmm? and uh, these things if these things are applicable for a particular mineral then that mineral is said to be essential mineral hmm? we studied that essential nutrients which are compulsory for the plant growth they are essential for the normal growth and development they are not present in plant plants have to absorb them from the external means they are known as essential element hmm? but what criteria should be there to call them as essential hmm? now let's see which are the criteria yes sir. so next point that is essentiality essentiality of mineral element essentiality of mineral element so arnon and stout arnon and stout in year 1939 stated that okay now let's see which are the criteria hmm? the first point is stated that elements must be essential for the plant growth it should be must okay without its presence hmm? or without it plant would be able to grow naturally hmm? so the first criteria the element should fulfill that is element must be essential for element must be essential it must be essential for normal growth it must be essential for normal growth of plant the second point for essentiality is that it cannot be replaced by any another element okay uh, you might have thinking that what will happen if particular element it is absent it can be replaced by the another element also but then in that case we can't call it as essential essential elements cannot be replaced by any another element okay so it cannot be replaced cannot be replaced by another element cannot be replaced by another element hmm? third point this element must be directly involved in the metabolic reaction okay not as a intermediate not as a secondary okay it should be directly involved in the metabolism Okay. so element must be directly involved directly involved in metabolism okay and fourth and important their deficiency could cause some disorders okay 
deficiency should cause deficiency should cause disorders in plants yes so if these things are applicable for a particular element that element can be called as essential elements okay let's discuss this one hmm? which element should be called as essential element it must be required for the normal growth of plant it cannot be replaced by the another one that and that only it is required it should not be replaced by the another element it must be directly involved in the metabolic processes and obviously if it is absent it must show some disorder in the plant that only it shows its importance in the plant growth so if these four criteria if they are fulfilled by a particular element that is called as essential elements huh? now <coughs> Now, based on this, out of 60, there are 17 essential elements. Okay, we discussed that when we studied the ash analysis or the ash sample of plant, we found that plants consist of 60 different types of elements. From that, some are called as essential. Now, which are essential? Those elements which fulfill all these criteria, they are called as essential elements. So, such how many essential elements are there? 17 essential elements elements are there which are necessary for the normal growth and development. Now these essential elements they could be micro or a macro element okay huh? so essential elements essential elements okay how many they are 17 in number okay there are 17 essential elements which are necessary for the plant growth as we discussed before some are must or they are required in larger quantities they are called as macro elements or macronutrients macronutrients Okay. Some are required in less quantities. They are called as micronutrients. Okay. So there are nine macronutrients and eight micronutrients. Initially there were seven micronutrients but one micronutrient it is added afterwards. Hmm. So out of 17, nine are macronutrients whereas eight are micronutrients. Hmm. Now list out this because we are going to study the physiological role, deficiency, symptom of all these 17 okay essential element hmm? so macronutrient include hmm? as i told you carbon hydrogen oxygen cho about 70 to 80 percent of plant body it is made up of cho that is carbon hydrogen and oxygen it is must without this cellular structure it is also not possible so carbon hydrogen oxygen these are macronutrients yes sir. from this carbon plants absorb from the atmosphere co2 whereas uh, hydrogen and oxygen is mostly absorbed from the water hmm? now besides this there is a nitrogen phosphorus and potassium we call it as npk yes sir. nitrogen phosphorus as well as potassium after carbon hydrogen oxygen these three are very important because they are constituents of proteins amino acids and then three more that is sulfur calcium and magnesium yes so carbon hydrogen oxygen okay then nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur calcium and magnesium these are nine macronutrients they are now they are involved or they are required in the more amount so it is known as macronutrients whereas there are eight micronutrients it include iron manganese copper molybdenum zinc boron chlorine 
and nickel hmm? now nickel it is recently added before that there were only seven micronutrients okay but nickel it is added afterwards so now there are eight micronutrients so macronutrients are required in large quantities whereas micronutrients are required in less quantities fine hmm? so today we will stop over here in the next class we will see what is the role of each and every element this this part it is very important in what way these essential elements they affect the normal plant growth what are their physiological role what are the deficiency symptom in which form they can apply externally hmm? so that part we will try to complete in the next class hmm? so today we will stop over here if you have any doubt you can ask me hmm? uh, besides this i just want you read ncrt also fine hmm? so with this i will take a leave okay goodbye and take care atomic arrangement yes sir so these substances are called as minerals yes sir now these minerals are inorganic salts fine hmm? then which point we discussed we discussed that from where they are absorbed 